Greetings and salutations, people of the internet. It's me, Mike, and I'm back again to work on the tribute. So let's get into it. So a few things definitely happened off camera, and that would be the neck pocket. I needed to be in a stress-free environment to do this, so sorry. The focus of today's episode is going to be body shaping and, well, a couple of fun things to do when you're shaping, like using a card scraper. But first, let's talk about the cult of the Shinto saw. This is my favorite tool for shaping. It does God's work. It's great. And it's like nothing you've ever seen before. It does great work, and it is an inexpensive tool. I highly suggest every one of you buy this right now. Amazon, go. But you see, it's pretty easy to work up a sweat doing this manual work. So while I'm shaping, I take a little break here and there and bust out some abrasives like my sander and uh, even the pillar sander or pedestal oscillating cock knocker. Yeah, behind me. So there you go. But that's what's going on here with this is we're going to use power tools to assist us in shaping because we are human beings and human beings are not meant to work their asses off for just a simple car. So that's why we combine hand tools and power tools to save our sanity. And one thing you're going to notice here too is that I keep switching back and forth between the Shinto rasps, the sandpaper, and even some other tools like the card scrapers and the chisel. And this might perplex some of you guys out there that aren't really necessarily folks that do a lot of woodworking. The chisel can be one of the most indispensable tools in your arsenal to smooth something. In addition to, you know, doing, well, chisel stuff. So, yeah, you have a lot of different options. Now, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of an idea of what I'm trying to accomplish here with this build, it isn't anything too out of the normal. It's just a, kind of a plain Jane Stratocaster build, and I've decided to go with uh, humbuckers, a hip shot uh, hardtail bridge, hip shot tuners, and you know, uh, do a, a, a rear route for all the electronics. I think that that's a pretty simple and easy thing here. And that's what the goal with this build is to build something pretty simple and very gorgeous. And so when it comes to the final fit and finish of the instrument, I'm gonna be doing this up with true oil and that's it. I'm not gonna go nuts on this thing with inlays or craziness. Uh, this is going to be the most plain Jane guitar that I can build considering how weird I am. You got that? Yeah. So how weird I am in comparison to this instrument, this is going to be pretty vanilla, right? This isn't like going down to, uh, you know, the club and meeting those people in gimp suits. No, no, no. This is so vanilla that it, it it's not really like that, you know? So this is, uh, this is going to be a guitar. It's going to be a, a guitar that can fit into any type of... Uh, musical situation in terms of its aesthetics. It might be a little bit more modern looking than say your plasticky looking Stratocaster, but this is gonna be really nice. And so here's just another quick little reminder to um, my channel is growing and in order to grow I need your help. That help is that I need you to like and subscribe. It is the old adage of every YouTuber but it is the only tried and true method of a channel growing. And I would like to grow my channel so that I can continue to make guitars and maybe even someday uh, be able to make guitars instead of being an IT guy. So it's kind of a lofty goal, but you know what? I think that there's some beauty in this world that I have yet to make that needs to happen. So like, subscribe, and uh, you know, follow me on all the socials if you can find me, which is cool. You know, we post those around sometimes. But yeah, like, subscribe, we really need it. Another quick announcement too, uh, this week I am going to be doing an upgrade and setup of a Glary guitar for my son Bob's mother. And we're gonna record the whole thing together, me and Bob. I'm going to do a whole fret level, polish, uh, maybe even a new nut, there's gonna be new pickups. It's gonna be a lot of work, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And it's going to be one of the first commissions that's going to end up on this channel. So much like you would see in Dave's World of Fun stuff. Uh, shout out to Uncle Dave. You know, we're probably related, Mr. Rayum. Please say hi sometime. But anyways, uh, kind of like one of his videos where 
you know, he's working on something, but it's going to be me working on something that I didn't make. And, uh, well, a lot of folks don't know that uh, Element Zero Guitars does do guitar repair here in Vermont. So if you are looking to have your instrument repaired, modified, fixed up, tuned up, jacked up, uh, hot rotted, well, I'm your man for that. And we're pretty competitive with the guys locally. If you get a quote from somebody else, I will match it and get you in and out the door probably a lot quicker than some of the other guys that are way too busy to actually take care of anybody. So definitely reach out to me through the channel. There's a little uh, contact part of the channel that you can find me on. All right, now that we have all the community announcements done, uh, let's get back to the guitar building stuff. So uh, as you can see here, we've chamfered some edges using uh, the sander, the Shinto rasp, and we're going through with the card scraper and just kind of cleaning stuff up. And it's not just gonna be the top that we do, we're gonna do these curves too. Uh, the, the, the card scraper is actually a wonderful tool to do uh, cleanup of your chamfered edges. And if you go to any of your local woodworking or woodcraft supply stores, you can find these things rather inexpensive. But keep in mind, you do need to have a burnisher, unlike I found out this weekend, to sharpen the son of a bitch, okay? So make sure that you have a burnisher if you're going to use one of these things so you can sharpen it properly. And also keep all your tools sharp. I've had to go through and resharpen my chisel at least a few times during the filming of this. But when you see the card scraper doing this, this holy work here, you can see that it looks kind of waxy. The kind of surface finish that it gives once you've gone through and uprooted some of that dust and start scraping the surface. It's a really, really cool tool, and you see there, it just gives an absolute beautiful finish. Like, this is, this is great. Uh, thing is, though, this is nowhere near uh, close to done, so we still have a lot of work to do. And here I am about to uh, start going through with the card scraper again, but this time on these big curves. And these curves are not exactly what we would call square. You know, they're definitely kind of rounded, so it's not really a chamfer. And what I'm trying to do is turn that rounded edge more into a chamfer uh, because I think that it looks kind of cool. Uh, the solid kind of like edges and lines look really good when you have them done upright. Um, and it also gives kind of a, a more 3D appearance to the instrument. But this process that I do here of actually shaping and carving the body is an iterative process. I like to actually take a break here and there and step away from the instrument, kind of give myself a little bit of uh, time to breathe, smoke a bowl, do whatever, and come back to it with a fresh perspective and maybe even a couple of cups of uh, coffee and look at what I'm doing and reevaluate where I want to go and where I want to be. Because uh, the way that I do guitar builds is every one of these is a unique piece. I don't have any plans of mass producing guitars. I'd like to be a bespoke guitar builder. And the people that have actually gotten some of my instruments have been really, really happy with them. Um, and especially because there's nothing else like them. It, you know, there's not another guitar that I make that looks like it. Uh, there's not another guitar that somebody else make that looks like it. Yeah, there's some classic stylings and things because, you know, guitarists are pretty traditional in a sense. You know, they're, if we were to equate this to the world of uh, alternative lifestyles, uh, they're not about that life at all. Guitarists, they want one thing and one thing only, and it's disgusting. Meaning that they either want a, a Fender Stratocaster, a Telecaster, a Les Paul, um, <clears throat> and a couple of those other oddball ones that, that exist out there too, like, you know, your, your dinkies or whatever. But usually your guitarist is going to be interested in a guitar that their hero plays. And so, a lot of times it's hard to market an instrument like this that's so unique because it's out of the realm of comfort of the musician. But in this craft, I want to try to break boundaries and uh, traditions to give people the best of, of all the different schools of thought, the modern, the vintage, the, the metal, the progressive, you know, all the different things that have been associated with a specific style of music, uh, you know, like the Telecaster and the, the single coil pickup at the neck and the, the bridge like uh, you know just the, there's a lot of different things that have been done in tradition that I like but I want to change because 
these instruments are capable so much more than what the artist usually thinks the instrument's good for. Uh, an example, uh, SMG did a video on if a Stratocaster or a Telecaster could be used in metal, and well, the short answer is yes. Uh, a lot of people didn't really believe in his results, but you know, at the end of the day, your guitar is going to sound like whatever the hell you're plugged into. Your pedals and your amp, that makes up a good amount of your sound. And, you know, the, the whole tone wood debate is bullshit. <laughs> and I can't even believe I'm bringing this up right now. But, you know, a, a part of me likes to think that we should build our guitars out of quality wood um, that are somewhat sustainable and, and everything else. Like, I just like walnut, so that's why I'm using walnut on this build. But, you know, that's, that's kind of my methodology is, you know, you use what looks good, what is structurally sound enough, and don't go crazy into the whole tone wood thing, because it's just a bottomless pit you're not going to want to deal with. Anyways, as you can see here, I am attacking this carve right here with this specific type of scraper. I forget the name. Uh, it's definitely a lot sharper than the card scraper, because I fucked that up trying to sharpen it so uh this was really my favorite scraper to use during this uh this filming project and, and by the way there is over three and a half hours of footage captured here that i've somehow managed to condense into 20 minutes so my brain is pretty messed up right now just dealing with all that footage i just reviewed all right, so we're gonna go in here now with the chisel, one of my favorite tools, and this one is from Harbor Freight, actually. It's really cheap. Uh, came in a pack of like, a, I think like five of them. Um, they really do benefit from sharpening. Definitely get a sharpening stone. It's a good investment. Uh, don't try to be like me and be like, I'm not gonna sharpen because it's too expensive. Uh, yeah, that kind of method of thinking is just going to cause poor results. And when you have an unsharpened tool, it's more of a liability than a sharpened tool. So, sharpen your stuff. Big takeaway from Mr. Mike and his guitar building. And here we are. We are actually pretty close to the end of all the work activities on this instrument for this video. I'm just going through here one more time with the card scraper, just trying to, uh, you know, smooth things out, try to get any dust out of it. Um, that's another nice thing about the card scraper, you can get dust out of stuff with it. But really, at the end of the day, the card scraper is just something that really enhances the quality of your work after sanding, and can even be used as a, you know, a shaping method if it's sharp enough. And alright, we're going to hit this thing with some mineral spirits. And we are going to try to clean up as much of the dust off of this body as we can. Uh, the Mineral Spirits is just a really nice way to just clean the wood after you've done some work. Get some of the dust out of the pores. And, you know, this is what I try to do to my workpiece every time I am done working on it. A little bit of cleanup, a little bit of, you know, just trying to take care of something after you've invested some time into it. It's going to save you so much time later on in the build. So every so often, clean your workpiece. Get out your mineral spirits or whatever type of cleaner you're using, as long as it doesn't have any of those uh, you know, thingies in there that's gonna turn your guitar into, uh, or your finished workpiece into, well, a finished workpiece. Um, so yeah, nothing with like wax or, or oils, just uh, mineral spirits, denatured alcohol. There's a few others that I believe should come to mind, but they're not, and that's okay. You know, uh, consult your local uh, wood guru on what they use for cleaning their project pieces mid-production, and they'll give you some good ideas. Ultimately, a tack cloth is going to be your best bet, but that's like, hey, I'm about to put sealer on this and get it ready for finishing kind of step. Whereas using the mineral spirits is like, hey, I'm done for the day. I'm going to clean my workpiece and just get whatever out of it that's in it and be done with it so that's why i love mineral spirits it's nice uh, this is the odorless mineral spirit so you're not going to be all like gassed out by it and uh you know you can actually get it pretty cheap that's kind of the nice thing you know the, the woodworking hobby is a pretty expensive one and it's something i wasn't prepared for when i first got into it so you know guys be careful out there there is some stuff that is stupid expensive 
especially hand planes right now. Like that is the craziest thing I've seen. Some of these things are going for $300. And I swear there's not even $10 worth of iron or you know anything put into these things. And it's, it's crazy. But hey, you know, you want a quality tool, you gotta pay quality. And then you gotta get the sharpening stones because if you don't get sharpening stones or any of that kind of stuff, you're basically wasting money on your planer because if you can't sharpen it, it's no good. So, sharpen your tools. Again, sharpen your tools. It's very, very useful. And so now we're just at about the point where the video is coming to a close. I just want to put a quick shout out to everybody. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your pals. Uh, hell, go check us out, EzoGuitars.com. That's EzoGuitars.com. If you're interested in having me commission a piece, or if you want to have a guitar fixed, repaired, talk about something, or join me on the Guitar Builders podcast whenever that's brought back from the dead, I would certainly like to hear from you. I love engaging with my viewership, and I love delivering content that you guys like. So, like, subscribe, leave comments. Uh, get in the loop let's become friends let's do this together this journey is ours to journey together is our adventure and we're going to do great things together as long as we are in solidarity with each other all right so i think we're pretty much coming to a close now as you can see the workpiece is looking nice i'm pointing out that i have to fill that knot right there and i eventually do so don't get bent out of shape about it <laughs> And again, please like, subscribe, do the needful. We're counting on you. This journey is ours. And it's going to be great. So, it's been a wonderful time, guys. I look forward to releasing the next video where we actually do the back of the guitar. And I'll be doing a little bit of work off camera just to speed up the production of these videos. Uh, just because, well, sometimes it gets a little anxiety you know, yeah, anxiety is a hell of a thing, guys. Be careful out there. So, yeah, some of this is going to happen. Oh, and I'm pointing out right there a little plug that I put in during the routing when the router bit yanked off a bit of wood there. And that plug is still holding there strong as of now, post-production of this video. And you can barely notice it's there. Like, you have to really look for it. Uh, it's pretty nice uh, a lot of it's actually been sanded down and just kind of smoothed over like I said barely noticeable but again guys like subscribe it's been a real pleasure stay safe out there remember drive slow drink milk uh, call your mother those are all good things to do and I'd be proud of you if you did them so everybody have a great night and we'll see you next week <laughs>